Hey, what is it guys? Welcome back to the mobile game tutorial. So, we're finally beginning the art phase and um, the art phase is going to be, I hope, different for everybody because everybody has their own style, but um, just a quick note before we get started is I'd actually appreciate if you guys actually shared your result with everybody, not on let me be the models, but maybe just screenshots of what you do because the art process is the, is some kind of process that really, um, I believe, needs reference. You actually, I think that you need reference in order to make something that look great. And uh, you actually take something, you recreate it in your own manner, and it actually looks good. So, okay, um, let's go ahead and uh, I'm just going to explain what I've did. So basically, I've cleaned up the first scene, so that's my one underscore training scene. I only kept the essential. Now the essentials are the main camera, the canvas, the player, the event system which comes with the canvas, the level manager, wind box, and also the new respawn point. Now what I'd like to do is actually start by creating some kind of flow. And uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to put all of these new scripts inside of the script folder just to clean up a little bit. So I invite you to just take your, um, your best 3D modeling software and we are going to go ahead and start making models. Right, so I'm using 3ds Max, that's what I'm going to be using because I quite like it. Now, the first step you need to take before actually using the 3D software you like the most is uh, actually set the unit setup. So if you take a look at Unity, this is a one meter grid. So if we put a game object, so maybe a cube, and we just put it on top of a grid tile. This is a square meter, so it's basically one by one by one. So just remember that this to this is a meter. You need the exact same setup in your 3D software. So um, in 3ds Max, to do that, I go inside of Customize, Unit Setup, then System Unit Setup. Make sure that this is on the meter, and the unit scale is one. After that, I go right here in the display unit scale, set it to meters, and then I right click on one of these uh, snap tool, not the last one, one of these three then. Then in ohm grid, I make sure that the grid spacing is one meter as well. So here it is, that is the exact same grid we have in Unity. Okay, so now that this is set up correctly, I'll just create a one by one block so I can actually have a look at uh, my texture that I'm about to make. So. What we'll do is we will create a texture that pretty much scales on every single axis so we can repeat it. Alright, so now we have a single cube like that. That's going to work for now. We are going to open up a Photoshop and I'm just going to remove what I had before. That's some old project. And we are going to go in new and create a new 256 by 256. This is going to be, say, um, Let's name it tile and let's name it tile green. I'm not sure. <laughs> Whatever you want actually. And um, we are going to create a texture that is seamless so we can actually reproduce, not reproduce, but repeat it on both axes. To do that, let's go ahead and find our colors. Uh, what's the name? That's green, so it has to be green, right? And I'm going to take colors from my references. That's the first one. And the second color is this one so it's a more oh it's a lighter green or a dark green if you want we can actually modify that a little bit make it darker and here we go so these are the two colors I'm going to be using and what I will be doing now is simply um, let's go ahead and just create circles so you just have to be creative really, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing right now, but I'll just find something eventually. And that's pretty much how I do all my texture. I have no clue what I'm doing and I'm liking it. So something of the sort, why not? And maybe another in the center. So there's a lot of keybind you have to learn if you want to use Photoshop. Um, quickly and I should actually help you with these so 
what I'm doing most of the time is I'm using the free transform tool. So maybe, uh, as you can see here, I have the back layer selected. If I do Control and T, I can actually free transform that texture and just move it around. Now, not only can I move it around, but I can also scale it down like this in any kind of matter I want. But what I do most of the time is I scale it in a uh, uniform manner. So I'm going to hit Control T. Then by holding shift, it actually locks the aspect ratio. So it remains the same aspect ratio as it was. And now um, often when I do that, I also hold alt. So the pivot point is in the center. So that's um, the one I use the most, I would say. And um, yeah, so it doesn't have to be really good looking because we're going to be re uh, working on it pretty much all the time. And that's going to be my first texture, right? Now we know that this texture is seamless because, you know, there's nothing stopping us from repeating uh, the texture on both sides because the, the green is the same over here as it is down here. And on the same, uh, on the side, it's always the same thing as well. So um, if you make a more complicated texture, say like this, I'm going to take a paintbrush and change the color for maybe like blue. And it goes like that. then if you try to repeat that it's going to look really really awful and in order to fix that um, you'd have to tweak your texture but a good way to do it is by taking all of these I'm going to duplicate them by doing Control J then merge them together so merge layer and I'm going to shut off all of these other ones now I go inside of filter other offset and we have to do half of the texture size. So now we know it's um, 256, so we're gonna do 128 by 128. And now we pretty much just uh, offset the texture and we have to make sure that all of these make sense and they connect together. So let's go ahead and just play around with our color like we used to. Maybe like that, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. You just have to be creative with that. <laughs> So, to do something of the sort, that's for this side, and then um, let's connect these two together as well, why not? So like this, then we go like that. Oh, what's this? Never mind. Um, and finally, like this. Right, and then we can remove the uh, extra, so... Oops. No, we can't actually remove the extra because I overridden the old color, so that's kind of bad on my end. So I'll just go ahead and do this. And change the color for the one next to it. Same thing here. Okay, so now we do have um, a seamless texture because if we do offset once more on this, so filter offset, it actually goes in both ways. So it's always going to work. And I'm going to show you that it works. So let's go ahead and save this. So I'll hit Control S and now I am inside of my um, project folder. So assets, artwork, and I've also created a texture folder. So if you have no texture folder, just go ahead and create that really quickly. And we are going to save the whole PSD in here. Okay, so now that this is saved, we can find it back in our Unity game. So if we go in artwork, tile green, and here it is. So um, just to show real quick that this is in fact seamless, I'll create a cube, put the material on top of it. And we have no mat, so let's go ahead and create one. So right click on material create a new tile underscore green and we're gonna apply the tile green albedo like this now apply it to this and as you can tell uh, except on this side because of the UV isn't right but if we actually use it like in a game um, it actually is tireless uh, not tireless I mean seamless in every single axis and that's pretty much it guys, so 
that's how you create the seamless texture. Now our floor could be like this, but I don't think that's really good looking, so I'll just go ahead and remove these and put back my put back my uh, texture on how it actually was in the first place. So filter offset once more, and this is what I'm actually looking for. Now the cool thing with this workflow is uh, since we save this inside of the asset folder, it actually updates uh, directly the material as well inside of Unity. So as you can see, we just change the offset. If we go back in our game, it is now looking like this, and it's actually quite better. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove this and uh, just put it back to what we originally had, which is this texture here. Now, of course, you're welcome to keep it the way it was. It's not going to change another thing, but I'd like to um, I'd like to add some more depth into this texture. So what I'll do, so we'll select these two texture, the two first texture, and I will hit Control T on the keyboard for a free transform. Then move one of the side gizmo using Shift and then Alt to make my circle a little bit smaller, like that. And let's hit Accept on this then save once more and it's going to look like that now so it looks more like um, actual tiles and I like it better that way. I will also try to create some kind of bumping effect taking this layer and adding a we could add a bevel we could add any kind of thing I'm not really good with Photoshop so to be honest I think I'll simply add a uh, bevel so maybe soften that a little bit. Make the size quite small, the depth big. And let's try outer bevel. Oh, actually, you know what? I like this one quite a lot. So I keep the pillow emboss like this. And just play around with my settings really, I have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> um, here we go, okay, some kind of thing like that. I'm going to hit save on this and take a look at what we get in the game. Now with the new Unity shader, there's a lot of things you can play around with the standard shader, so um, you could go ahead and just play with the metallic and also the smoothness of this and it could actually look quite great. And that's the kind of result we have. So we're not I'm not I'm not really disappointed with that and I'm actually going to keep it for quite a while. Now we could be working on the uh, center circle as well. Actually, let's go do that right now. And I'm not going to complicate things too much. I'll simply do a right click on this one, copy layer style and paste it. And that's going to be pretty much it, I believe. Right, okay. So now that this is out of the way, let's add a light to our scene so we can actually see it. And uh, that's the kind of result we get for that texture. Now this is a block, it's not really cool, and we can't really stand on it for too long without uh, this thing getting too boring. So I'm going to go back inside of 3ds Max, and uh, this is not a new scene, I've simply removed my box. So inside of here, I'll create a, say a 4x4, four four, and then I'll put 1 meter in height, but we'll change it right here in the settings for, say, 0 0.25, and hit enter on this. I mean, um, hit convert to editable polygon. Now, I have keybinds for this, so it's going to be a little bit faster on my side, but I'll try to say it when I do it. So convert to editable polygon. Now with this new polygon, what I will be doing is we'll apply the texture to it. So we're going to choose the uh, first material, why not? Just drag and drop it right on top of your object, just like this. And then in the diffuse field, I'm going to click on this little box, choose bitmap, and then we're going to go ahead and find our texture. And I'll find it directly from the project folder, which is in here. I believe. Tile green, here it is. Click OK. Just move that here. Make sure that the show shaded material in viewport is checked. And that is the result we get. Now, this could work on its own, but it's a little bit too big and the sides are not OK. So, what we'll do is we are going to take these. So, I'm selecting all of these edges. 
and we're going to do a connect. And since this is a uh, 2 by 2, I mean 4 by 4, I'll actually make sure that there is a full of these align. So same thing on this side, connect, and here we go. So we just split our object by quite a lot. And now all that is left to this is we have to redo the UVs because the UVs are a little bit messed up and we need to fix that on this side. So what I'll do is I will select all of these one on the sides by um, taking my face selection, then clicking on the one, then holding shift, and it's going to select all of these around that. Now I will create, not create, I'll add a UV unwrap modifier, so I think it's unwrap UV actually, so unwrap UVW and I will add this while I have uh, the selection. Now I'll go inside the open UV editor and this is now our UV editor and all of these faces, they should be the same exact thing that we have selected down here. So. Let's go ahead and change that really quickly. I am going to go up here where it says uh, the checker pattern. We're going to choose the tile green instead. So we can actually look at our texture while we're doing this. Now this is the current UV layout we have and I believe if we take a single face, as you can see we're moving um, a single UV. Now I think it's this one over here. Yeah, you can probably tell if you look really closely so uh, what I plan on doing with this is I will select all the vertex on this side, so I'm on the vertex selection, and I will quick transform align vertically with pivot like this. Now once I have this, they're pretty much all stacked, uh, if you can tell, and I'll simply move this right about here. So now if we press on space, uh, not spacebar, if we do a convert to editable polygon, we can actually take a look at the sides and they look much cleaner than they used to but they still not they still don't look too good and now what I'll do is I will not select anything I will simply leave it like that and we are going to add a unwrap modifier now this time we don't only have the selection we also have all the squares you see up here so if we take a look at our UVs we can tell that all the squares are pretty much just um, a single tile on top of that so if I move this one around it's going to mess up the UV so what I'll do is actually select all of this side just make sure that um, what we had previously so these one over here that they are not out of the picture they're not selected and you didn't move them over here so we'll redo the UVs for these guys uh, really shortly so don't worry about that and we will simply go ahead and try to fix the size right now so I'll zoom in on that and just play around with the UVs until we get something that looks great in this uh, texture. So maybe even rotate it around so like this, I'm selecting all of my UVs and I think there's a snap, yes, yeah there's a snap if you uh, hold control as you do it and I'll simply move that back here. And like this. Now, if we pull this on the other side, we can actually get um, we can actually get this little chunk of texture, but on the next UV. So that's actually really good. We'll keep it like that. And here we go. So we can actually keep this. I believe this works quite quite good for the sides. And now we have to fix the mess that is the top, uh, the top part of this. So I'll do a unwrap again, open the UV editor. Now we know that this one over here uh, is all of our sides, so we must not touch it basically. And now what I'll do is I will go ahead and take my face selection, click on one of these, a single click, don't do a mouse drag, that's going to select all of these, so a single click and I'll do tools. Flatten mapping, click OK, and here we go, we have a tile. So we kind of have to redo that for the whole um, block, so it goes really quickly if you're fast at clicking, but I'm pretty sure there's another way you can do this, but I don't know what it is, and um, I really appreciate if you guys have any tips on that, because that's the most annoying part of it, really. So I'm just selecting every single one of these one by one, and I'm doing a flatten mapping. Since these are square, they're assuming the position of the UVs, and it's 
pretty much working right away. You can also select them on your object right here. So as you can see, I'll just do the whole top side first and I will move to the bot side. Oh, wrong button. And uh, flatten mapping, flatten mapping. Now if you were to select more, uh, more than one at a time, and you do flatten mapping, you'd actually get this kind of result, so that's not what we want. And, um, well, unless we actually select four of these, and we do a flatten mapping, then that would actually look great. But since we want to have a single texture every meter, let's keep it like we had it. So, like this. And then our whole top side is done. We can now move to the bot side. Oh, you know what, for the bottom side, let's actually do um, full big squares instead. So in case we get tired of having too many of these, we can actually flip the object around and um, have less texture. Okay, so that's the final flattened mapping. Make sure that you convert this to a editable polygon, so right click, convert, and that is our object right here. Now before we import this inside of Unity, there is a few things you need to know. So the first one is uh, we got to clean our object up a little bit. So select your object and uh, let's actually type in something for the name. So I'll just say 4x4 four four, and that's going to be pretty much the platform uh, size. After that, go inside of the Utilities tab, do a Reset X form, then Reset Selected. Then you go back inside of your uh, Modify tab and you do convert to editable polygon or collapse all. Once that is done, we're going to go inside of our key and then fix the pivot. So um, select the effect pivot only, check this, and um, you are going to make sure that this pivot, this thing over here, is the exact same as Unity. Now Unity, as we know, um, it uses the y-axis as the up and down, but inside of 3ds Max, it's different. It's not the same thing. So we have to modify that before we can use it. So what I'll do is I will leave my pivot at 0, 0, 0, but I'll move, i rotate it around. So pressing E on the keyboard, I will go ahead and just move my pivot in rotation. Now to make sure it snaps, you can press A on the keyboard. And now you can see it snaps to the angles. Right. So once you have your pivot um, pointing up, your actually your green axis pointing up, you can now collapse this once more. So convert to the polygon if you wish. And that is pretty much it for our object. Right. Now let's go ahead and save it inside of our project folder. So I'll just do um, Control S and go inside of my computer, then wherever my project is, in this case, mobile RB, assets, artwork, and I've also created a models folder. So go in there, and I will save this as 4x4, then hit save. Now, usually in a big project, you do not want to save your 3ds, mile, uh, 3DS Max files inside of your asset folder because it's going to load every single time Unity boots. But in this case, our project is quite small, and this is not, you know, this is not a thousand vertex polygon. That's a simple plane uh, with few, a uh, few connected edge. Okay, so we can actually save it with no problem inside of Unity, and as you can see, it pretty much just loaded it as we open it, and it wasn't too long. Okay, so now that this is completed, let's go ahead and uh, we have our model right here, which is four by four. Let's drag and drop it inside the scene so we can actually have a look at what it gives us. So I'll just move this at the origin. Here it is. And I'm going to lower it a little bit. And we're going to change the shader because now we get the shader that comes in with uh, 3ds Max and that's not the one we want to use. We actually made a shader earlier, tile green, and that's the one we are going to drag and drop on top of our object. Now another really important thing we need to do is we need to store these inside of prefabs because we're going to be changing a little bit of stuff on top of them every single time. So in my prefab folder, I'll create a new a new folder and I call this um, floor tiles. 
and once it is done I'm going to drag and drop the 4x4 inside of here right okay so now that um, that prefab we need to clean it up a little bit so it's selected once more we're going to remove the animator also make sure that you have the good shader which is tile green and then we hit apply but there is one more thing that we need to do and if we press play you'll notice it right away we actually go through the thing now since this is a really simple object and uh, it's actually convex we are simply going to add a box collider to it and it's going to work just fine but say your object was not convex and a box collider just wouldn't do then you'd have to go ahead and add a uh, mesh collider instead so mesh collider like this and it does the exact same thing it's a little bit less optimized but in the end it's going to work right our object is really simple so we'll just remove that and put the, uh, put the box component I mean the box collider alright then let's make sure we hit apply and that's our first prefab that's our first gameplay prefab with our first um, texture alright guys so I'm going to end this video we did quite a lot of stuff and um, hopefully I didn't rush you too much I know the, the art stuff is really different from what we used to do and uh, and it's going to stay like that for like few episodes because we need we need to keep uh, working on the art a little bit for few episodes before we can go back to making gameplay prefab and then we're gonna go ahead and check out our menu scene make sure it looks great so we can actually you know have some kind of color going on that being said guys thanks a lot for watching and uh, if you learned something just go ahead and leave me a like I really appreciate that if you have any question or comment you can you can leave them in my Facebook page or in the comment section below and also subscribe for more tutorial like these thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next episode